trust me, the biggest stress you're ever going to have in your life is buying a ridiculously big, massive property. Cultural heritage Cultural in Italy. Cultural heritage in Italy that you want to do up and live in. Salute a tutti! It's another splendiferous day at our palazzo. Oh, it really is. It's so bright, so you have to excuse us. We're going to have to keep our sunglasses on. It's no the... way can we take them off. No, it's the autumnal sun. It's gorgeous. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, um, before we um, really get into the nitty gritty of this video, we just wanted to also say that um, you know we really enjoyed being part of the UK uh, TV series, the second series of Help, We Bought a Village, which was on Channel 4. It's actually still running at the moment. There's six whole weeks of it, and we were in episode six to nine so if you haven't watched it yet you can watch it on catch up and if you're not in the uk you can watch it from abroad using a vpn um and yeah. thank you to all at true north for being so wonderful actually and yeah. um treating us well <laughs> and sending us fantastic camera people we're a big <laughs> fan of the series we watched it way before we even uh, were in it and we really enjoyed it haven't we even though our progress is that of a snail's yeah. pace compared to it does make, some, uh, some of the know, contributors. And that's the problem because we're probably the only cultural heritage building in the whole series. And it makes us really stand out as not getting anything done <laughs> compared to everybody else in the series. Yeah. Uh, and that is hard for us because we are raring to go and raring to get it done and dying to move in. It's been a long, long wait for us. Yeah, and we're going to tell you a little bit more about the cultural heritage process and how it's sort of like, um, you know, hindering us in just a moment. But before that, I just wanted to say, um, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please, please do. It really helps to boost our morale. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, us. you know, it's, it's support for us. It helps us grow the channel, but not only that, it really does make us feel that we're supported um, and that there is an audience and interest growing for this beautiful, beautiful, magnificent um, cultural heritage monument. And I know it may look to you like we are living La Dolce Vita in the sun and always having a pair of TVs, but we do get down because we have an awful massive amount sitting on our shoulders. Financially, we don't move it forward very fast. and We're not allowed to actually work on our own house because it's cultural heritage. It has to be people that are uh, correctly... Um, Certified. Well, we, we wanted to sort of set the record straight as well because I think a lot of people have a misconception about um, being in one of these TV series. We don't get paid for it at all. Um, obviously, it's a real bonus in terms of exposure, particularly for those contributors who are, you know, closer um, to finishing than, than us, much closer, or have actually finished and set up a business because, you know, it's it's an amazing um, uh, promotion. Mm. We're, still a, we're still a way off, and that's what we wanted to talk to you about. Today. So from the uh, TV series, we've had some comments about people saying how lucky we are um, to have a million euros spent on the renovation of this property. For well, the earthquake. For the repairs. earthquake work. Um, of course, we never knew there was going to be an earthquake, so we never knew anything about how this works here. Mm -hmm. until the earthquake hit. Which was in 2009. We bought this in 2008. So if it wasn't for the earthquake, you know, we would be up and running now. We'd have a yeah. business now. We'd actually, you know, we'd be okay financially now, mm. but we're not. But this centre where we're sitting right now in front of the entrance to the uh, Centro Storico, this whole bit that we're sitting in now was closed off completely and disregarded as if it was never going to be repaired. Now... I had to actually go to court to get permission to be able to restore our own house. We won the case and then we could do the work. But that was a massive, stressful thing that we had to go through and in the first long, place. took a long time. took an mm. awful long time. And, um, of course, we're not the only person to get this. Uh, thousands, tens of thousands of people got funding to repair their houses from the earthquake work and still are getting it now. Uh, mm. The this fact is... that it's cultural heritage does make it slightly different. In one way, it's good because it means that they will restore it to how it needs to be, regardless of cost, because in Italy... They don't look at it like they're giving us this money, which they're not. We had no say over how the money was spent. But Italy looks at it like if it's a cultural monument, it has to be preserved. Yes, and that's what they've 
they've done, they've preserved it, but in the process as well, there have been a few errors made. Um, uh -huh. For example, our lovely tower has, well, it's been changed. So for example, now we've got no access to the top level. Now there are dove windows right at the bottom. Now doves don't fly in right no. at the bottom. Yeah. But also they haven't put back in, we've got it sitting in the garden, a huge one stone, of. one of, um, we don't know where the others are, no. belly of the cannon window. It, so, had, it had four and we've got one. And one of the original stones that would have housed a cannon in the watchtower. That's where the cannon would have been positioned low down. And above it is an arrow or gun slit where they would have fired out one. Yeah. And that's not in either. So we've got permission because they realised the mistakes. They said, oh, yes, you can put it right. Oh, well, we've got to pay for that. I and mean, it's not our fault. Yeah. So we, we've got to find extra funds for that. So there are things that have been done incorrectly. There are things that, you know, uh, uh, doorways that have been closed up closed off mm. for no reason we have evidence there were doorways there speaking to the architect we were like is this for stru structural security oh no no uh you know whatever we weren't there during the process there was covid we couldn't come. yeah we weren't even allowed to drive no, up here at one point no. i tried to drive up here and the police stopped me can but, you move over a little bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> i've lost the sun, sun. okay um, um there we go. You know, we're not we're not dissing cultural her heritage by any means. Um, it's definitely got its pros and cons. But mm. um, one of the other comments uh, that we had that we just wanted to sort of clarify as well is, well, you know, if you've got a million um, euros, your property must be worth, you know, uh, quite a few million or over a million. Well, you know... It's definitely worth more than we well, paid for it. It's definitely worth yeah. more. But what I'm trying to say is that it's only worth the value to someone who wants to buy it. Now, properties don't really move here very quickly in Abruzzo. Um, and also, it's it, like I said, it's the value to someone. So, you know, at the moment, it's not habitable. Is that of value to someone? You know, um, we have to put in hundreds of thousands. We hoped that we were gonna get um, funding. When we first bought it, there, were fun there was funding available and we were relying on that. Then when the um, earthquake repairs um, were completed, there was government funding available. We had these 65% and 50% cashback um, bonus schemes from the government. They were withdrawn this year. Just before we were able to take advantage of it. Just before we handed our project in. So at the moment, we've got no financial aid. Um, so at the moment, if it's not habitable, what is it actually worth? What is its value? You know, if, if there was <laughs> some wealthy person out there who wants to give us a few million for it, we'll certainly think about it. With cultural heritage, if you do have the money from uh, the government, you have to open your, have to by law, open your house up to let people come around and right. see it. Right, so that, let me clarify, there is um, a restoration bonus scheme available from cultural heritage, uh, 35%, that's for restoration of... I don't know. Like, for example, if we wanted to restore the balustrades. No, we don't. We just want to make them secure. I just want to <laughs> knock them down with a big hammer. Yeah, well, we can't. That's but nice. um, we're not going to pay a huge amount for some specialist to come and restore them. We'll make them secure, and they can be just like they are right now. But, you know, that's... The, the, for, so for similar works, you get 35%, like mm. a cashback thing. But I've also heard it can take years, even decades, for you to ever see that money. So... Is it really worth getting that 35% maybe at our age um, mm -hmm. and then having people traipse through um, the, the property for you know years and years to come, twice a year? Well, of course we'd love people to come and see this property. Of course we'd love to open our doors. But right now, I'm not sure cultural heritage would like people to come and see the big mistakes they've made, especially no. on the tower. <laughs> so, Can you see? Yeah, no. yeah. Come on, just take the chair over. We've lost, we've lost the uh, sun now. So basically, we handed our project in to Cultural Heritage on the 24th of June this year. Now, Cultural Heritage, the superintendent uh, in charge of our, who will be responsible for our project, um, the architect, not our architect, our architect has to work with him. The um, Cultural Heritage Architect. Yeah, the Cultural Her Heritage Architect is called the Superintendent, Superintendent, I guess. Mm. And um, yeah, so he has 120 days to respond. Well, 120 days has been and gone. And he hasn't responded. And he hasn't responded. And we're just waiting. Yeah. So then your architect has to give them a nudge and then they've got another 30 days to um, respond uh, before you have to take them to this um, other organisation. Um, anyway, anyway, our architect has nudged him, so... We're still waiting. Mm. This is still not habitable. 
Um, and, and you know what? He is fully aware, he has been told, he's met me, that, you know, we're a family of four. We're renting. Our money is dwindling because we're continuously paying rent. For five years. We're now, yeah. But, you know, the thing is, the more rent we pay, the less money we have for this. Mm. Yeah. The less money we have for this, the less we can do. I mean, you think that cultural heritage, you know, they'd be really pleased um, that individuals want to save cultural heritage buildings, you know. And the fact that, you know, we're still waiting as a, you know, a family coming here, you know, it, the Italian government wants to regenerate historic centres of villages. Well, that's what we're, mm. we're trying to do. So but we're not really getting much help in not, that sense, no, are we? None. No, so you think that maybe for individuals that want to save cultural heritage buildings, there should be some sort of fast track See, approach. You know, uh, they, uh, they wouldn't, if they thought this building was important enough to save, which they had, it's also important enough to be used, which is the important thing, because there are lots of buildings in Italy, A, cultural heritage ones who have had nothing done to them at all and are crumbling, and B, cultural heritage buildings that have been restored and then locked yeah. because people can't afford to do anything else to it. Because, no. it, like this one, 1,000 square metres, you know. Yeah, and th this is the other thing. I mean, we hope that that will change in the future. We, you know, if it does, we probably won't benefit from it. But sustainability is one of the key sort of um, mm. things that needs to be um, addressed with regard to cultural heritage buildings. But not only just cultural heritage, any buildings in a historic centre because... Um, you can't go forward into a future with a massive building no. unless or, or you're any, thinking yeah. of how it is how how to pay for the keeping it going and the sustainability. Well, of exactly, it. because the thing is, if you're in the historic centre or if you've got a cultural heritage building like ours, um, you can't put energy-saving photovoltaic panels, solar panels. You can't put them on top of the roofs. So you're not allowed to. Well, help us. Mm. <laughs> Another way. Oh, I found this fantastic heating system, um, which comes from Austria and um, it really is cutting edge and it would have meant that we would be completely off grid now i approached this company and said look we've got this fantastic property we'd like to be a showcase for your um, uh, for what is possible to do with your special heating system we told them we're in this tv series because i mean you know if it's you great just exposure. look through some yeah and if you look through some of the footage there is a company mm. a wonderful um, german removals company who had their logo displayed mm. um, clearly yeah. a couple of times there is that opportunity and we don't um, have a heating system at all. And this house needs a specialist, really economical, really clever heating system. And I found it. And the company were really interested. And uh, so I, I was really over the moon and optimistic. Yeah, uh, the Austrians. Then, the mm, Austrians were very interested. And then they passed it to, <laughs> unfortunately, to... The Italians. To the Italians who didn't understand. Because, and I understand why. They didn't understand what we were offering. They didn't see any value in it. And so they offered us a tiny percentage, which is what you normally get, 10%. Anyone yeah. that wants to make a sale offers 10%. It's not like anything <laughs> yeah. special. No. And we were offering them a huge amount of things in return. Yeah. Yeah, and not just the TV series. Lots no. of other um, promotions and open days. And it really would have made something yeah. fantastic here for people to come and see in Abruzzo how you can make an eco-sustainable building of this type mm. and uh, so now we don't have the money for that and now you know well this is the thing that you know the longer this goes on like i said the uh, the funds are dwindling we're going to have to look at different ways and we're going to make the project smaller i mean this You might have noticed we've, we've just moved. We're following the sun. Following the sun, how <laughs> lovely, yeah. Um, anyway, um, so what I um, also wanted to point out is that um, with the Cultural Heritage Project, it's far more expensive than any other sort of restoration or renovation project because um, you have to use specialist architects and specialist builders, mm. which costs a lot more. But not only that, just, we'll just be very transparent here because... We now can't do the entire premises because we don't have the funding, we don't have the finance available. Like we said, our money is dwindling. So we are going to do it in phases. Now the first phase <laughs> is the ground floor and the first floor, the terrace apartment and our home. Well, we can't actually afford to do all of that anymore either because this is taking so long, because we're not getting this project signed off because of so many different things. 
Well, the project um, costs us money as well. So the entire works... Huge money. <laughs> yeah, the entire works, let's say they, well, they calculated them, the architect did, at around about 200,000, which well, we actually thought we were going to get um, some funding available for. We don't have 200,000. So 200,000 euros. Well, there's also an additional cost to that, and that's 15% of the works, 200,000, the 15% is the cost of the project. That's the cost that the architect charges. incurs and yeah. charges mm. for their time, for their calculations, for the submission to cultural heritage. Um, and so on a project of 200,000 euros, well, that's 30,000. It's 30,000, yeah, which Just is a huge for the cost. chunk that you don't get anything for. It's not yeah. for putting a new kitchen in. It's not for anything like that. It's just gone. Yeah. And it's I mean, difficult. it's fair enough uh, because, um, you know, they have to earn money and we understand that. Oh, and cultural yeah. heritage has to be looked after so they have to make sure the right people do the work. Understand all that. But it doesn't make our lives any easier. And it's just, we're here just to try and explain our situation because maybe that hasn't been explained very well. And it's um, a situation that is frustrating for us and financially delib uh, deliberating. No, that's wrong. Financially dis dis disabilitating. That's the word, thank you. <laughs> Financially disabilitating in a big way. And we're sort of running out of time. We're getting older, the children are getting fed up. And, we, you know, it's. Yeah, yeah in a, it, basically, we came over here and we wanted our children to grow up in here it. and in this village and be part of the village community. We live into Italy today. These, these you know, hilltop villages crying out um, for families. Think By the time it. that we're here, our children, they're not, they're not going to be interested. They're teenagers now. So we, uh, we haven't come on camera here to just <laughs> moan and be miserable. <laughs> I know that's what it sounds like. Yeah. We really haven't. It's just that we both felt that we wanted to get this off our chest. Yeah. So keep your fingers crossed for us yeah. when we do finally get the uh, feedback, approval, authorization, whatever. But anyway, we hope that the things that we want to do to this need, magnificent need to do monument to make it are approved yeah. so that it can pay for itself mm. so that it can you know afford to cover the maintenance that it can be configured in such a way that you can run a business from it because, because trust that me, way you could never live in this unless you're incredibly rich which no. we're not and run this without having a business here be because that way is the only way that this building is going to be saved.